In this video, we are going to derive the formula for the magnitude and direction of the vector that we obtain after subtracting two vectors. Now in order to find that, let us recall the formula for the magnitude of resultant that comes out of addition. So if I have two vectors a and b that I add, I get an s vector as my resultant and the magnitude of this s vector is nothing but square root of a square plus b square plus 2ab cos theta. Now in this question or in this problem, I am going to carry out subtraction of a from b. So I will carry out b vector minus a vector just to find the formula. So if I have to find the formula for subtraction, I have to subtract a first. So let us carry on the subtraction. So I have to first of all interpret a into minus a. That is exactly what I have done here. In order to add b and minus a now using parallelogram law, I have to complete the parallelogram and join this body diagonal. So I complete the parallelogram and join this body diagonal. This gives me my d vector. Now the interesting thing here is the angle between the b vector and minus a vector is not angle theta anymore, but it is rather pi minus theta or 180 degrees minus theta. So now if I just totally forget about the right hand side uh, in the diagram, I am left with two vectors added using parallelogram law having an angle pi minus theta between them. So I can take the same formula and just make the changes into the values that are changing and I will get a new formula. Let us see how it happens. So over here if I have to interpret b minus a vector, I can see that the magnitude of a and b or over here b and minus a is exactly equal to b and a uh, respectively, correct? The magnitude of this vector is a, magnitude of this vector is b. So a and b stay unaffected. However, the angle between the original vectors when I was taking the sum was theta. So what is the angle between the vectors when I am taking the difference? Pi minus theta. So the only change I have to make in the formula is substitute pi minus theta instead of theta. Once I have done that, I can just uh, do the next step calculation. I know that cos of pi minus theta is simply minus cos theta. So the formula for d becomes a square plus b square minus 2ab cos theta whole over square root. Now as a student you must remember that this angle theta that I have written here is still this angle theta, correct? So if you are able to numerically put the value of pi minus theta in the problem, in that situation this formula itself is the final formula. But if you know only the value of this angle theta, then you can directly use that angle and use this formula in your problem solving. Now let us talk about the direction of the resultant vector that comes out of subtraction. So once again looking at the direction that we obtained uh, when two vectors are added was given by tan of alpha is equal to b sin theta upon a plus b cos theta. Now in this situation the angle alpha can similarly be uh, can similarly be explained as this angle alpha between the resultant and the lower vector in this case which is minus b. So I can basically say that if I have to interpret the angle I can explain tan alpha as b sin pi minus theta upon a plus b cos pi minus theta because once again magnitudes of a and b stay the same all that changes is the angle between the two vectors right because initially the angle between a and b was theta so we got this formula now the angle between a and minus b is pi minus theta so we get this formula now notice the modulus uh, symbol that i have placed across my uh, term what is the reason behind it the reason behind it is all i am interested uh, is in the magnitude of this alpha or the value of this alpha. Now the reason for that is that I, this the value of alpha that I obtain from this equation may not be correct by the sign convention. So in case if I obtain a negative value, my interpretation of alpha may be that it is a negative angle. But that will not be the case over here, alpha will not, alpha is not necessarily a negative angle. That is why using a modulus symbol prevents me from making that error. So over here you can see. Uh, in the next step, I can write the same thing as tan of alpha is equal to b sin theta because I know sin of pi minus theta is nothing but sin of theta upon a minus b cos theta because cos of pi minus theta is nothing but minus cos theta. Now once again, this angle alpha is with respect to minus b vector. If in the problem they ask you find the angle with respect to b vector, the angle will simply be pi minus alpha as the answer. I expect students to use the right sign convention in the problem after essentially solving it, finding the value of alpha. So summarizing what we just learned, 
we can say that the magnitude of the resultant that we obtain is nothing but square root of a square plus b square minus of 2ab cos theta. Just remember this angle theta is still the angle between the original a and plus of b vector. If I have, if I choose the angle between a and the new minus b vector, it will be angle pi minus theta. Now in order to predict the direction of the new vector, I can say the, the formula will be tan of alpha is equal to modulus of b sin theta upon a minus b cos theta angle theta still being the original angle between a and plus b vector. Now uh, understand the modulus symbol here is used because we are only interested in, in the magnitude or the value of the angle alpha, we are not interested in the sign. If you are supposed to answer the, the sign of the angle as well, the student must find the value and then use the proper sign convention after finding it. I hope you enjoyed the video.